State research firm Reese is reporting an improvement in vacancy rates and rents at U.S. neighborhood shopping centers for the second quarter in a row. Jacob Friedman is the chairman and the CEO of United Realty Partners, and he, and he joins me now. So what you're seeing basically is that there is a bit of a build in commercial real estate, but what about the retail side of it at this point? Well, the retail side is an area that we're concerned about. Um, we think that it's actually overbuilt, with the exception of certain pockets that uh, provide high-level luxury retail, like Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills or Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue in Manhattan, excluding those types of very expensive retail, which we think is great. If you exclude those, we have way too much retail space in America on a per capita basis, as okay. far as we're concerned. In the United States, there's about 43 square feet per capita, compared to the UK at 23, Canada at 13, and most of Europe at just over three square feet per capita. So we have a lot of retail, and consumers' buying habits are really changing. Okay, so, so if, if I'm, if I'm going to open up a store, I'm going to get into commercial real estate or retail real estate, as you say. Don't do it unless I'm going to be looking at you know, Beverly Hills or Chicago. Let's talk about, though, um, the, the, the online shopping effect on this, because you think that it's actually going to hit those higher-end consumers and stores moving forward? Well, I don't know about the higher end of the market, but I think certainly everything but the higher end of the market. People okay. today are changing the way they shop. They are looking at the Internet. They're buying on the Internet, and that's impacting the bricks-and-mortar stores. And, you know, Best Buy is a great example of that. It's a store that is having problems because it delivers um, its merchandise through bricks and mortar. So as a real estate investor, that's not an area that we generally like right now. But, you know, REITs have become very popular uh, for people. It's an investment vehicle. It's a way to get into real estate without actually buying a piece of property on your own. Having said that, if you look at residential REITs, commercial REITs, um, there's been a little bit of volatility in those sectors. How are you feeling right now? Right. Well, I, I think that you look at when they were buying properties. So if you're talking about REITs that were acquiring properties at the top of the market 2006, 2007, and they're starting to dispose of them now, obviously they're going to have significant impact. It's going to, prices have come down. Okay. By contrast, those REITs that are coming out to buy property now, where we are close to where I think the bottom of the market will be, are going to benefit from that because they're buying at below replacement costs. They're buying much less expensively than before. All right. And, and real quick, healthcare REITs. Those seem to be like fine, yeah, Health. strong, okay, Health healthy. Care I guess. Seem to be pretty good. Okay, all right. Uh, Jack Friedman of United Realty Partners. Jacob, excuse me. Jacob, thank you very much for being on the show. It's nice to have you here. Thanks.